Hey there, it's Mark from Men Who Bullet. Thanks so much for checking out today's video where we're going to be recreating the spread that I used in my bullet journal this week. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a different video because I actually had to work on this over the weekend when I was away from my camera and my phone, so I wasn't able to film it as I created it. So I thought we could recreate it. And instead of doing it again inside of my bullet journal, I'm going to use this Archer and Olive desk pad here to recreate it in. For materials for this, if you wanna recreate this with me, you're going to need a pencil that's always going to be super important especially as we sketch out for these banners and these ribbons for the pens i'm using two sizes a 0 0.05 that's going to be for a very fine point and then the 0.3 is going to be for our boxes as you can see i'm also using watercolor inside of my notebook this week and for my watercolors i'm going to be using are these beautifully handmade ones from peppercon art i'll talk about that in just a second you also need some type of a brush or a brush pen and water so i'm going to use this really easy brush pen that i I got from Amazon. I'll link that in the descriptions below. So let's go ahead and start laying out the page in our desk pad. The first thing that I do in any notebook, regardless of size, is I always have the measurements, how many squares top to bottom and how many left to right. I always like to count out my squares and that way it's an easy reference so I know how to split things out. I'm going to be doing five days during this week. So I'm going to be setting up these spaces with eight across from the left to the right with one space in between, and that'll create my spacing all the way across. Now for this spread, we're going to be creating two different banners. The top banner is going to be our header for the days of the week, and then we'll be doing another banner a little bit further down for notes. Now when you're setting up this first banner, what we're going to do is actually move in one space from the left and the right of those eight spaces. So the box itself is only going to be six spaces wide. Now I'm doing this to make sure that I'm leaving space on the left and the right hand side for those extra flag banners that I'm going to be creating. Now when you're doing this top one, it's important that you just use this pencil first because you're trying to get that general spacing for yourself to make sure it looks right. What we're going to do is take this box just a little beyond our main space area that we have here. That's going to give it that dimension to make it look like it's overlapping and wrapping around the box. This design is actually one that I got from Appy Doodles, which is one of my favorite step-by-step -step doodle tutorials on Instagram. I'll also link their profile below so you can find the amazingness that's there. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here so you can get a closer view of how I'm creating these. So again, we're gonna draw that rectangle a little bit further out from our baseline. And then we're gonna draw two upward facing curves on the left, two downward facing curves on the right, and then we'll connect those into each other. Now that we have these all complete, what you're going to do first is make sure you're giving yourself enough space between this top header banner and where your next one is going to be for our notes banner. So I like to give myself enough space because this is where I'm going to put events or appointments throughout the week, just as a general overview. It's not where I'm going to keep my notes themselves. So I don't need a ton of space, but enough to add things in there. So I'm counting down five from where my top banner is. I'm just gonna draw a quick line here and then just sketch in the rest of where this is going to go. So I'm gonna draw this line here and I'm just gonna add this outside curve to the bottoms here. That's what's going to give it that look like it's wrapping around the outer box. And then I'll draw my top line and then just a small little curve and I'll connect it down to the bottom. Now I'm just gonna sketch these out quickly across the rest of the page here so I have the general spacing of where these are going to be. Again, I really love the more organic feel to these. It just makes things a lot easier. It does make me a little bit nervous. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm so used to using my ruler when creating these lines, but I think it's a lot of fun. But maybe for you, it takes away that extra stress of trying to make it perfect and makes us all okay with imperfections. Now that we have all of these, if you want to, you can take your fine liner or your pen or whatever you're using and just outline the main banners here that we're going to paint in. Now when we do this and we lay down the paint, at least in the ones that I'm using, it's very opaque. So it is gonna draw over these lines a little bit, but I think it'll be helpful to let us know what space we need for when we're painting in between these lines because we are using a pencil and we're being very sketchy about it. So sometimes laying down this first layer in this pen is helpful and that way we can erase all of the pencil lines and make sure we're only painting what we actually need. As I mentioned to you before, the watercolor that I'm using this week is a really Really beautiful and amazing collection from Connie over at Peppercon Arts. 
Now I'm going to be using this iridescent bronze for those top flags for the days of the week and this wonderful cyan blue in the bottom here for the notes banners. Now this is just a water pen that I have. What I like about these is that you just fill them with water and you can take them with you wherever you go. So if you like to travel and paint or you just don't wanna have extra cups of water lying around, these are really great options for you just to squeeze a little bit, get some water on your paint, let the water sit for a minute or two, and then you can start to paint with these. Now using water inside of a bullet journal can be a little tricky. And the reason I say that is that, at least with these Archer and Olive notebooks, the paper is 160 GSM. It's probably twice or three times thicker than a lot of the paper that you'll find in other journals. But it's not watercolor paper. So as I'm using watercolor, what I like to do is a wet on dry method, which means I'm going to have the wet paint and I'm going to add that to a dry paper. You can also do wet on wet with watercolor, but I would not recommend it. For these notebooks, I would find watercolor paper because the paper might buckle. If you don't have a water brush, that's totally cool. You can use any paintbrush that you want and just some water. Now, when I'm laying this down, as you can see, I'm using heavier paint. So I want to have more paint than water, so it's not gonna be very watered down. Now for this, I'm going to go lighter on the water and make sure I get more paint. And especially for this iridescent bronze, right? This looks like liquid bronze on this paper. How amazing is this? I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my water brush here so that I don't take that extra bronze with me into the cyan color. And then I'll go ahead and just pick up that paint. Again, I want to make sure I have more paint than water, but still have it a bit wet so the paper doesn't buckle. And I'll go ahead and paint over each one of these. This cyan color has the most amazing iridescent sparkle shine to it. I can't get over it. Again, it's like a perfect mix of like metal and blue. It's crazy to me that Connie Han makes these. I don't even know how she does it. I need like a, a video of her process to see because I think it's just absolutely the coolest. Now that we have all of the paint down, it's everyone's favorite process of watching paint dry with watercolor. <laughs> I love watercolor, it's my absolute favorite medium, but we have to be patient with it. It doesn't dry instantly, and we need to make sure that we give it time to dry because the next step is going to be writing over top of these with our fine liners. So we wanna make sure that the ink actually stays and it's not picking up any of the extra paint onto the pen itself. As I mentioned before, I'm using a very fine, fine liner here. It's a 0.05. This is probably the smallest that you can go. And I'm using this one to outline everything because I really want the paint to be the star. I don't want the black marker to be what everyone sees at first. So using this very fine just gives it a gentle outline. I can fill in the spaces that I need and the paint is still what is the star of the show. As I'm outlining these banners, what you'll see that I'm doing is just going around the main outline first of the rectangle, and then I'm doing the flags. But then what I'm doing here is just connecting the bottom left to the bottom right of that flag. And that's gonna just create that little shadow that's underneath it there to give it some dimension on the page. Now that all of my top banners are done, I'm going to do the same thing across the bottom with my notes banners that are here, and I'm just doing a rough outline around each of these. I say rough, but really it's going to be the main outline. I'm just not trying to be too precise about it. It's okay if the paint goes outside of the lines. I don't mind it. I really kind of love that sometimes when that happens. And as I said before, I'm hoping that this will help you feel not as stressed about creating these and allowing things to be a little messy. For me, it's even hard because I really love my straight lines. I love those very specific geometric shapes. So whenever I'm going outside of my comfort zone, I just have to remind myself that it's okay. This is watercolor and it's good to go. Since all of my banners are very organic, I do want some straight lines though. I can't help to get away from that. So what I'm going to do is just start to draw in my vertical lines down all of these verticals. And I'm going to use the 0.3 so it'll be a little bit of a thicker line, which I think works really well with the thinner lines that we have for the banners. Our next step here is going to be filling in each of the days of the week inside of the bronze banners at the top. I'm going to go back to using my very fine point 
0.05 fine liner here because it is so fine you might have to go over some of your titles twice just so the ink can really catch on there this paint specifically is very opaque as i mentioned so it has a good thickness to it even though it's watercolor so i'm just going to need to do a little extra there but if you're using a standard watercolor that's not exactly like this or you're even taking a water-based marker and adding water to that to get the watercolor effect you should be good with whatever marker or pen that you're using the next step of this that I'm going to show you is how to add some extra small details to your pages. Now, when I first did mine, I thought it looked kind of boring. So I wanted to add in these little dots and stars just to give it some extra fun to the functional. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now if you're interested in adding in that layer. It's pretty basic. We're only using three shapes, really, or three kind of marks on here to create these and just randomizing them as we go through. So the first one that we're going to create is just an open circle that kind of looks like a bubble and all you're going to do is just place them randomly down your page. The next one is going to be just an asterisk star, it's a super easy one to create and we're just going to place them randomly on the page as well. And the last thing is going to be just quick dots. You can be more precise or do these really rapidly as I'm doing them here. And as you go through, what's super cool is that as you are filling in these smaller dots, you might feel like you need to add a little bit more in between those spaces. So maybe you wanna add an extra star or an extra open circle, whatever feels right to you. There is no right or wrong way to do this. I have a bad habit of overdoing things, so you'll see me just holding back a little bit as I'm going through. The last small detail that I'm going to add to the page is adding some gold accents. So again, another wonderful little surprise I got from Connie. She sent me these two metallic iridescent additions. They weren't a part of my original set, but she sent them so nice, a gold and this fuchsia. Now, if you don't have a gold watercolor, that's totally cool. Uniball makes a wonderful gold metallic Signo pen. You've heard me talk about my love for Uniball and their Signo pens, especially their white gel pen. This gold gel pen is amazing. So first I'm gonna show you what this watercolor gold looks like, and then I'll use the other gold gel pen to show you the comparison. I'm being very gentle when I'm laying down this gold watercolor. It doesn't need to be overly done. You just wanna dab it on here. Now let me show you what the gold Uniball gel pen looks like on here as well. Obviously a gel pen is more accessible than gold watercolor, but it's all about what you have. And in the comparison here, you can see the watercolor and the gel pen both, it looks like liquid gold put on the page. So you can go with either of those options and it still will look very nice as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish out the rest of the page with the watercolor and just dab a few gold dots on here. So this is our Vertical Weekly using metallic and iridescent watercolors. You can use any type of watercolor or marker to get a very similar look. It's all about what you have. Use that stationary, friends. The one thing that I didn't have space for on that desk pad that I do wanna to talk to you about were some of these fun trackers that I added to my week. I added three of them just as a way for me to pay attention to the things that I'm interested in checking. So there's three things here. The first is exercise. I kept it very simple, just created seven squares across and dated them off my sleep tracker i love these are really nice and easy to make i'm just tracking between one and nine hours of sleep which is a usual range it's usually six seven is what i usually get here and then across the bottom axis i'm just adding the seven days of the week similar to what i did for the exercise one i'll put a dot every day with the amount of sleep that i got and then i'll connect them uh, each day as i go through and the last one here is for water again using the seven days of the week going across but doing an a.m and p.m I'm interested in how much water I'm drinking and I know that I'm not very good at it. I usually am a water drinker in the afternoons, but my mornings are all coffee all day long. I really appreciate you checking out this video as we went through and created this. Don't forget that if you would like to see the after the pen of this, you can follow me on Instagram at men who bullet. And you can also check out more videos that I have inside of my bullet journal playlist, which I'll go ahead and link above. And I'll add some at the end of this video too. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and always feel free to reach out if you have any questions about bullet journaling or materials. I'll talk with you very soon. See ya.